Hi there, my name is Amy. And I'm one of the librarians here at Davis Family Library at Middlebury College. This video is one of four in our orientation series for students at the language schools. In this video, I'll be talking about the physical space of Davis Family Library, as well as the digital spaces that the library occupies. I'll include some uh, timestamps in the description in case you'd like to skip to a specific topic, and I'll include links to any particular resources that I mention in the video as well. Thanks for watching. So let's start by talking a little bit about library spaces. And what I mean by that are both the physical space of Davis Family Library itself, and also the web spaces that it occupies. Um, before we do that, a couple of points of business to make sure we're all on the same page. Of course, all students in any of the immersion programs at the language schools are required to take a language pledge, which bars them from speaking English to each other or to other people. Um, but you should be aware that librarians and library staff are an official exception to that rule. Uh, we don't expect you or us to be able to speak all of the languages represented at the language schools, and so you can always come ask us questions, ask us for help uh, in English and without breaking your language pledge. It's totally okay. Also, I hope by now you've all been made familiar with the concept of Go Links that we use at Middlebury, but just in case, a quick review. Uh, Go Links are sort of like shortcut links or like web addresses for places in the web space for the entire college um, that you can use to just kind of get to web pages quickly and easily. And most of the time you can guess them pretty easily. So like, so for example, if I wanted to go to the library webpage, I might guess that it would be go slash library slash, not all browsers need that second slash, but the ones that need it absolutely do need it. So you'll always see me put that second slash on there as well. So go slash library slash, and you see it'll bring me right to the library webpage. That's a pretty easy one. We can try something else too. One of the pages that you'll see and you might use quite a bit is the central page to ask a question to librarians or to ask us for help. And the name of that page, which we'll look at in more detail in a little bit, is go slash ask us slash go slash ask us. So you can see just by typing that into my into my uh, web address bar, it'll bring me right to this page. We'll take a look at it again in a little bit, like I said. Um, and most of the time you can just kind of guess what the go links for something might be. Uh, so if I were interested in what's being served in the dining hall today, I might try go slash dining. Or if I were interested in help from the IT department, I could probably do go slash IT. And most of the time you can guess what something it'll be and it works out pretty well. So it's a handy thing to have. But you'll see me use go links and refer to go links periodically throughout these videos. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody was kind of familiar with what they are. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the actual physical space of Davis Family Library, because there are a few places that I want to make sure you know about. So here I have a map of the main floor of Davis Family Library. When you come in, you enter through this door here, and there are three main service points in Davis Family Library, helpfully all highlighted on this map. So when you first enter, when you get to the side of the desk and you just make a left, this whole space over here is the circulation desk. And so this is where you will come to check out books or to return books, um, to ask for equipment, uh, to ask for audio CDs. Um, what else? Reserves. I don't know if they use reserves much for language schools, but if they do, they're there. Um, and just to generally get sort of help with just using the library on like that very basic level, you can come to the circulation desk. There's always staff here anytime the library is open and they're always happy to help point you in the right direction uh, and answer most kinds of questions. Second, if you were to turn 180 degrees, if you were facing the circulation desk and you just turned around, you'd almost be facing the ITS help desk. It is kind of tucked back here a little bit, so it's not always obvious when you walk in, but it is a walk-in help desk, and you are, anytime the library is open, you're welcome to come in 
and get some help uh, with your device, your laptop, uh, your passwords, your login information, any kind of technical problems you might be facing, you can come here to the ITS help desk. And then obviously more important than any of the others, uh, right over here, just inside the library, just past, you know, once you start getting into the stacks, right over here to your right is the research desk. And that's where you will find me, maybe, uh, and my colleagues. And we usually man the research desk most afternoons. Um, and it's just a drop by place where you can come and ask more complex questions um, or simple questions. We're happy to answer simple questions too. But if you need research help, if you're looking for a specific kind of book or a specific title, or if you want help finding newspapers in German, stuff like that, we can help you with those questions over here at the research desk. All right, what else? Oh, very important. Here on the map, you see there's a little section here called browsing. And if you just come in and you face this, you'll see it's mostly sort of leisure reading, general browsing. But if you come just around the other side, you'll find our uh, in-language browsing collection. So we have built little mini collections uh, for each language that's taught at Middlebury and each language that's taught at the language schools. So you'll find things like language dictionaries, uh, some leisure reading material ranging from the pretty simple to the more complex. Uh, you'll find DVDs in your language, uh, that sort of thing. So it's just one place to come immediately and have a look just for stuff you might like to read um, in your free time, because you'll have so much free time. But in your free time, you might come in here and look for items to read in your language. We have a ton of study spaces um, all around the library, pretty much. I hope anything you might want, uh, you can see here. We have some Carol suites over here. There's a big bank. It's not really visible on this map, but there's a big bank of study Carols in here. We have some standing desks scattered around. And then, of course, both upstairs and downstairs, we have private study rooms, uh, group study rooms big reading spaces where you can sit in a comfy chair and look out across a Vermont Vista or maybe sit in a giant bean bag or, you know, sit at a big table with some, some classmates and you can study however you want to. We also do have some language specific study carols. We don't have the exact locations of those determined just yet, but they will be labeled. And of course, anybody at the circulation desk, anybody at the research desk can point you to the uh, carol suite that's specifically for the language you're studying, which is intended to help you make sure that while you're in the library, you can avoid exposure to English or any other language that students might be using in the library. So do check on that if that is of interest. Um, and then also, if you would like a little tour of the library, feel free to drop by the research desk again. Um, and if we have time, if somebody is available and we have a few minutes free, we'll be more than happy to point out some other features of the library to show you around a little bit, um, point out any particular things you might be looking for, just give you general directions. Uh, but if you'd like a little tour, we're always happy to do that. Okay, let's talk about the web space a little bit now. So here we have the main library web page. I just want to show you a few things around the web space. Number one, the library hours are always posted right up here across the top. Uh, mainly, you'd be interested in the Davis Family Library hours, although you can also see the Armstrong Science Library hours. And then if you click this little link, you'll get like the research desk hours or special collections hours, that sort of thing. So you get a little bit more granular view of the hours. So if you're interested in what time the library opens and closes on a given day, you can always find that information right through here. Um, also, Let's see. These links across the bottom are some also very important ones. 
Um, I told you about the research desk and how you're always welcome to drop by the research desk when the librarian is on duty and will help you with your research questions. But if you would prefer something a little more one-on-one, -on -one, or if you'd like to schedule a session with a librarian, this button right here, meet with a librarian, this button will be a good way to do that. You can click this button and you can select a topic or you can say, you know what, I'm not really sure. Uh, you can choose a specific librarian if you know there's one that you'd rather talk to or you can just say whoever is available. You can pick a date, you can pick a time and it'll automatically schedule a session with a librarian. They usually run 30 to 40 minutes, whatever it is that you need, and it'll just be one-on-one. -on -one. We can do it in our offices or by Zoom, whichever you like. Uh, but we are here to do one-on-one -on -one research consultations with you as well, if you would like. If you're not sure exactly what you want, you know, I told you about go slash ask us. Well, here's the button. This will take you to the same page as well. You see, it says ask us. And if I click on that, you'll find a lot of different ways to get in touch with a librarian. For example, there's nobody at the desk right now, so the chat's not working the way you might see it, but you also might see this pop up, and this is a place where you can just enter a question. When a librarian's on duty, you'll be chatting with one of us real time. Whenever we're logged into the system, we'll chat and we'll help you with your question that way. Uh, you can email us. That'll just email all of the librarians simultaneously, and whoever gets to your question first will send you a response. Again, here's that little meeting scheduler. Uh, you could text us. People don't do that much anymore, but if you wanted to, you could, uh, or you could even call us if you wanted. Um, we also have a running FAQ uh, with a lot of the most commonly asked questions. You see there's a selection of stuff that comes up very frequently here, but you can also search the FAQ directly. So I might say, uh, I'm just gonna pick an easy one, New York Times, I can just search and you see it'll start bringing up FAQs that have been answered. So if you just need a quick answer to a question, you might check the FAQs because often you'll find a just quick, easy answer in there. And then finally over here, there's a place to reserve a study space. Some of the single user and group study rooms work on a reservation basis. So if you would like to book one and make sure that it's available when you want it, uh, you can come in here. And you see that right now, as I'm filming this, it's a busy day in the library, but there's still some spaces open and you can pick your room and pick your time and reserve that space just for you. Interlibrary loan we will look at in a later interview. Um, but then the most important thing on the entire page, and we will, again, we will cover this in more depth in a separate video, uh, but this big search box is like the master search box for the whole library. It defaults to a platform called Library Search, which is the most important platform for searching for articles and books and videos and most things in the library. So that's always where this starts. Uh, but just to point out, there are a few other things in here as well. There's, if you go to the Guides tab, you can look up uh, the research guide for a given subject, including all of the languages that are taught at Middlebury. There's a quick way to search for a specific journal or to search for a specific database or even to search for reserves. Again, I don't know how much language schools will be using reserves, but that is in here as well. So this search box is probably the most used feature of the library webpage. And that's right here. If you have any questions, of course, you can always come to go slash ask us. If you have any questions about the website or the library itself, come find a member of the library staff or a librarian, and we'll be more than happy to help you find your way to whatever it is that you're looking for. So I hope this video was helpful. As your time at the language school progresses, I'm sure you'll think of more questions, in which case I encourage you to get in touch with a Middlebury librarian. You can find us most afternoons at the research desk at Davis Family Library, or you can reach out to us via the webpage at go slash ask us, where you will find an extensive FAQ, as well as ways to get in touch with us by chat, text, 
email, or by scheduling a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a librarian for your in-depth research questions. We're always happy to help. And thank you very much for watching. Good luck with your summer, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye.